This video is going to be all about differential gearing for the Jeep Gladiator platform. Now much of what I'm going to talk about is going to convert over to the Wrangler JL, but you'll see a lot of Gladiator because that's what I've got a ton of experience with, specifically with the 3.6 liter and 8 speed automatic. I'm going to go into my experiences with different tire sizes, stock differential gear ratio, and my experience with aftermarket differential gear ratios. Now the first thing I want to talk about is really what you can get away with from the factory. Now, with a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon, I have found with the 410 factory differential gears, you can get away with a lot. Specifically, if you're just looking to run a 35 inch tall tire, that eight speed really makes the gearing pretty forgiving. You don't have to go crazy and go high differential gearing with something like that. Matter of fact, I would say if you're just looking to run a 35 in general on the Gladiator platform, you probably don't have to re-gear at all. On the highway, you'll still keep eighth gear, and around town, thanks to that very low first gear in the eight speed, you're gonna have plenty of power off the line. Now let's talk about 37s, cause that's really the biggest question I get. Hey, I'm gonna go with a 37. What differential gear ratio would you recommend? And do you really need to go with a differential gear ratio change with a 37? And my experience has been as follows. If you live in any place that's very hilly or you've done a lot of mods to your Gladiator, I'm talking about winch bumpers, racks, and things like that, you're gonna notice the big power drain. Now, some of my testing over the years has really kind of got me into a spot where I will say, I've had 37 inch trail grapplers uh, from Nitto Tire under a Gladiator with factory 410 differential gears and I have found that on the highway I could not really use uh, eighth gear it just wasn't there seventh gear would work okay but that more aggressive tire and it being a little on the heavy side it really impacted those overdrive gears swapping out to a lighter tire for example I put on a set of recon grapplers from Nitto tire it's an all-terrain it's about 10 pounds lighter per tire we actually took uh, my Gator Gladiator to Florida, went and saw the uh, rat extortionist in Orlando and drove back. That was about a 1,200 uh, mile trip and the truck did fantastic. It said it averaged about 16.9 miles per gallon. I think that was a little on the high side. It was calibrated correctly using a taser from Z Automotive. But the big takeaway for that trip is on 95, I was able to keep eighth gear at cruising speed, no problem. The power still was a little down. I mean, you could tell it wasn't as powerful, but it really wasn't bad. I was fairly happy with uh, the vehicle just in terms of power overall. So that really plays a big difference is how heavy your vehicle is, how, so how modified it is, and how heavy the tire is, and how aggressive it is. A more aggressive tire that's heavy is definitely gonna zap your power a lot more. So that's something to consider now ultimately with 37s when i was originally building my uh, granite crystal metallic gladiator i ended up putting 488 differential gears i thought for the lightweight of that vehicle and how i was using it and where i lived in the coastal plains that was the right gear ratio to go with now i pretty soon after changing the gears, drove that Jeep to Moab, Utah for the Easter Jeep Safari. And on the interstate, I found that if you're going, really speeds above 70 miles an hour and there was any headwind, I could no longer keep eighth gear. It was just too much for it. Now, seventh gear worked fine. And overall, the power wasn't that bad. Uh, when I got into Moab and going through Colorado, you could definitely tell that it was down on power. That's common with elevation. If I lived in those areas and had that same Jeep, I would have gone with a 513 for sure. Looking back on it now, a 513 probably would have made a little bit more sense for power. But again, I live in the coastal plains, 488's not bad. If you have 37's under your Gladiator with the 3.6 and the eight speed automatic, if you're asking me right now what gear ratio 488 versus 513 i'd go ahead and go 513. it's really not going to hurt you that much you've got really good overdrive ratios with that seventh and eighth gear you got a fantastic first gear ratio it's not going to penalize you and if anything i think the 513 is just going to give you more crawl control off-road it's going to put less strain on the transmission all those things that you want 
Now I mentioned all this to catch you up on a vehicle that if you've been watching the channel, especially recently, you know I've been building, which is a 2020 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon that I've had on 38 inch tall Nitto Trail Grapplers for quite some time. It's a 38, 1350, R17. It actually only weighs three pounds more than a 37 inch trail grappler and I think it's a great tire. It really pushes the limits of what the Gladiator axles can handle but man that long wheelbase really benefits from that 38. Now I ran that 38 with stock 410 differential gears for a year solid and it wasn't great, but it really wasn't that bad. Again, living in the coastal plains, that eight speed automatic really made things better. On the interstate is where it was just terrible. Any speed over really like 60, 65, it just couldn't hold seventh and eighth gear. And you know, it's one of those things where you're really putting your transmission through a lot when it's constantly having to shift and move around and your engine's gonna be a little bit higher RPM because of the ratio in six gear. It's not great for it. And the fuel economy suffered, the performance of the vehicle suffered. So I knew I needed to change differential gears. And this is where I kind of struggled because going off of that same breath of, hey, I probably should have gone 513, I actually still had that axle set that had the 488s from the previous Gladiator because I'd swapped in Pro Rock XT60s with 538s and done the big axle swap for that Jeep. I knew I could bolt them in in a few hours, so that's what I did. I basically did an axle swap of a set of stock Gladiator axles with 410s and swapped in my axles with 488 differential gears. I felt like that would be enough for the 38. I just, I just figured it was worth it. Again, I had them. I pulled out that other set, sold that other set for enough money that if I needed to upgrade the axles or change the gears, like I, I was in a good shape to be able to do it. So that's what I did. And what I have found is, yeah, it did sort of what I thought. It makes it where you can run it through all the way up to eighth gear. The power off the line feels fantastic. It doesn't feel like it needs any more gear for where I live. That Jeep's fairly light, especially in its current configuration. It's got a best top, soft top, uh, super top for trucks too on the back. It's got soft top on it. It's got soft doors on it. Um, it's not a really heavy Jeep and it probably never really will be. So. 488s and 38s are, that's not too bad. At uh, 70 miles an hour, my RPM is right about 7, I'm sorry, my RPM is right about 2,000 and that's perfectly fine. It holds eighth gear without a lot of issue. Uh, the power seems okay. The fuel economy is now back up to around 15 miles per gallon on average, which isn't terrible. So 488s and uh, 38s, not too bad. And this is kind of where I think I want to go into a lot of discussion has been talked about the pinion size when you start to go up to a higher numerical differential gear the pinion size starts to step down and I'm just not educated enough to, and I haven't seen any real testing uh, from Yukon or Nitro Gear where it really says, okay, if you have a 529 gear, it's substantially weaker by this much versus a 410 gear. Um, I know initially when people were regearing their axles, I think there were some issues with when these axles first came out with the 220 axles, and I don't think that really exists that much anymore. There's been a lot of speculation that, oh, the 488 is a stronger gear because it's got a larger pinion over a 513, a 5, you know, 38. Uh, I just don't know if how true any of that is. It seems to me there's a lot of, you know, people that discuss it. My thought on all of it is I haven't had an issue with the 488 gears. Um, I've wheeled a lot on them and I've never, you know, really shock loaded it. I haven't, I don't rock bounce or anything like that. And I think if you wheel conservatively, you're probably going to be fine no matter what differential gear you put in. I mean, realistically, I probably should have gone something crazy like a 529 uh, gear because the eight speed can handle it. it. It really can. And it gives you a lot more flexibility to be able to either under gear or over gear because you've got that eight speed. Uh, the 3.6 liter makes most of its power higher in the RPM. So you're not necessarily uh, doing yourself favors by keeping it idling really low with a low uh, numerical gear set. So, you know, there's a lot of schools of thought. I think if you've got a Gladiator on 38s or a Wrangler on 38s with the 3.6, uh, I would personally go at least 513. 
I think that's a better differential gear overall. I would not say that 488 is bad, but it's, if you live in, again, elevation or your Jeep's overly heavy, like it's probably not going to feel like a good enough gear change to do it. If you have 410s and 38s, you need to re-gear. You're just putting too much strain uh, on the transmission and it's just not good for it. Off-road, it really doesn't make that big of a difference with the Rubicon because you've got that four to one low range in the transfer case and it works fine. It, it gives you enough gear reduction, even with a 410 and 38 or 410 and 37, that it's very usable. The problem is on the highway, you're just taxing it so much. So changing out differential gears is absolutely worth it for preserving the life of that transmission. My larger Gladiator that I have on 40s that has the Pro Rock, it's got 538 gears. This Jeep has been uh, cross country multiple times. I've driven it to the Rubicon, to Moab, and I'll tell you, on the interstate, there's plenty of times where I'm like, man, I wish I had a little bit more differential gearing uh, because even though it will keep eighth gear, sometimes it drops out and you just want a little bit more passing power. If I could put a 617 in this thing, I probably would. It's not going to hurt it. The eight speed really gives you uh, a lot of flexibility uh, to be able to do it. So don't be too afraid to put a little bit more gear at it. Um, if you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. If you think I'm crazy, let me know. That's fine. <laughs> I'm really trying to just really give real world experience. I've been building these gladiators for four years now. Um, you know, the two Wranglers you see behind me, one's got, uh, both of them are V8 powered, so they're a, a whole different uh, ball game in, in terms of uh, differential gearing and that stuff because of the power. But at the end of the day, these three sixes really can benefit from more gearing. They make more power at higher RPMs. Uh, if you wanna see stuff that I'm working on behind the scenes, you can check me out on all social things at Ali Mansour Editor. Until next time, please guys, if you like this video like subscribe it really helps the channel i appreciate you guys watching and i hope to see you on the trail take care